we're going to use a little Arduino Pro Micro to make this, which is a little control box for Mach 3. I've never really liked having to reach over to the mouse to click on the right buttons to cycle start or emergency stop. I ran into this recently when I had a crash on my machine and didn't hit emergency stop quickly enough. With this, I just have to ha whack on it and that stops the machine. I thought I'd start by showing you the thought process I went through uh, after I decided that I wanted some buttons. So I started at uh, SparkFun. I love SparkFun. They have a lot of cool things. And I think I just uh, searched for buttons. And uh, scrolling through these, I looked at all the different buttons and then decided that, you know, I really liked these buttons. They looked good. So they had green and they had red and they had yellow. Now at the time I looked, uh, they were out of the out of one of these. Now they're all in stock. So I probably would have ordered these. But I wanted to have something this weekend so that I could build it right away. I was impatient. So I decided to, instead to look at Amazon. And on Amazon I searched for Moomin... Can't spell while I'm talking. Momentary push button. Uh, and these come in all sorts of different sizes. So I, you know, looked at these. Uh, you know, here we had some in different colors. I wanted them in different colors. But as I was uh, scrolling through and looking at these, I didn't really find any that were about the size I wanted. I was looking for the same as I found on Spark Fun, which is about 30 millimeters. Anyway, fast forwarding, going through these, uh, I got to page nine. I think it was. And then I got to this page, I hope it's this page, and saw this, well, it's getting a little more interesting. And then I ran into this, which is what I ordered. So you can see this has uh, buttons that are <coughs> 240 volts and 3 amps, way more than I needed. But these are about the size I wanted, and even better. I wasn't looking for this, but uh, this button right here, is an emergency stop button. So you can just mash onto it uh, with the palm of your hand and it'll stop it right away. And I thought that sounded like a great idea. So I ordered that, got it for Saturday delivery, and uh, since this was a long weekend, uh, started working on it. This is the box. Let's uh, have a look inside to see what we have. There are just a few screws. They're not all the way in. You can see they're self-tapping screws. And my plan is not to use all of the buttons, I just want to use these three. I have no idea what I would use this for. But the idea is that uh, this would be the emergency stop, pause, and then start. Okay, this looks really simple. I can see that uh, this one is loose. Let me see. And the others are pretty tight. It looks like there are some screws on either side for tightening this one, so let me go ahead and try that. tighten them evenly so it's not... there we go. That's tight. Now if we look at this, uh, let me see if I can zoom in. Okay, so you can see that uh, these are marked NC and these are marked NO. Uh, they're, it's interesting, they're upside down. Uh, and then NC. Now it doesn't really matter because I'm going to hook these all to the Arduino. I'm going to use the pull-up resistors and I can just change the polarity in the code once I hook this up. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, hook up some wires to these and then hook them to the Pro Micro, and then we'll head to uh, the Arduino IDE and uh, see what happens when we start pushing buttons. 
I got a new microphone, but I forgot to turn it on. So I'm going to have to explain what I was doing now after the fact. The first thing I wanted to do is to add uh, a ground wire along the left side of each of these uh, three switches. Um, I have wire colored that matches each of the switches. So I have red, yellow, and green, as you can see. And so I'm going to start with the black and uh, strip off the end and then uh, cut it to length so that uh, it'll fit into uh, each of the ground sides. And then I'm going to connect them together, as you'll see here. Uh, it's pretty easy to see what's going on, so I'll just uh, go ahead and fast forward and you can see the hookup process. Next I'm going to hook these leads up to this breadboard and plug the Pro Micro into the breadboard and that way I can test things out before soldering the final version together. Uh, I actually have more than one of these. This one has header pins on it. The one I'm going to use in the final version will have these wires soldered directly to the pins instead of using header pins. So first thing, line it up, push it in, and then I'll zoom in so you can see this better. Okay. All right, first thing I want to do is I'll, I'll line this up and I want to uh, hook the ground up to right there, which that's the ground pin. And then the order doesn't matter for the rest of one, so I'll just do red to pin two, yellow to pin three, and then we'll do green to pin four. And the final thing is to hook up the USB And now we can head over to the Arduino IDE. When I first uh, start working on a program, I usually like to start simple and test something. So I'm going to show you the, the simplest test. So the first thing I want to do, I like to define constants for things. So I'm going to, instead of using the pin numbers, I'm going to f define red as being, let's see, it's pin 5. And then I'm going to just copy and paste that and change it to... Next one over is yellow, which is pin 4, and then we have green, which is pin 3. And then I need to set those up, so I'll set pin mode on red to input pull up. And what this will do is that this will bring the voltage up to 5 volts using an internal resistor of about 10k, I think it is. And then when I push, the, when one of the buttons is connected, then it will short it to ground, uh, not using much current. So that will change the voltage between 0 and 5 volts, and that will change the input between a 0 and 1. So I'm going to set uh, all three of these to uh, be the same. And then what I want to do is I want to read and display this. So I'm going to do uh, serial.print and then digital read of, uh, I'll start with red, and then I'll copy and paste this. And I'm going to do yellow next. I'm kind of doing the order of the buttons here. And then finally I'm going to do uh, green. Now for the last one, for green, I want to do a print line so that uh, it's uh, starting in a new line. So I'll go ahead and compile this. By the way, I've already saved it, as you can see here. I'm going to compile and upload it, and you should see it upload here. And there it goes. And then when I open the serial monitor, you can see that we're seeing the numbers 101, which corresponds to red, yellow, and green. And you'll notice if I push down on this, it becomes a 1 twist and it becomes a zero. So I think, uh, I'm not sure what's going on here. I may have the numbers wrong. Uh, red is five. Yes, that's correct. So I'm not sure why that's showing up as the middle one. I'll figure that out. But you can see that each of these is uh, 
working except for that one. So I may have gotten these numbers wrong. Yes, I did. Okay, so that's what the problem is. It's 4, 3, and 2. And this is why I like to do it this way, to you know, make sure that um, everything is fine before I move to the next step. You know, start with the simplest program. So we'll bring up the serial monitor again. Okay, now the first one is 0, which is this one. That's what I expected. When I press, it becomes a 1. Press yellow, it becomes a 0 in the middle digit. Press green, and it changes the last digit as well. So we're all set there. I found this sample program that uh, makes it pretty clear what I need to do. You can see it's using this uh, keyboard command. First, it does a keyboard.begin to set up the keyboard. And then it does keyboard press with uh, various commands. And this is exactly what I want to be able to do for Mach 3, because Alt-R is uh, cycle start, and Alt-S is going to be stop. Um, but for now, what I want to do is just have it send out some uh, simple characters. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and created a sketch here. So you don't have to watch me type it in. And you can see I'm doing the keyboard.begin. And then I created this function that takes a, the button, the character, and use alt. And as you're going to see, this is not a good enough uh, program. We're going to have to do a little bit more work, but it's the next step that I took. So we read the state of the, the button, and then we compare it to this array here. So I create an array of 10, which allows us uh, 0 through 9. Uh, it's more than we need. And then this right here says to set all the values to 0. So initially, it'll be 0. And so what this does is checks to see if the state has changed since the last time it read it. And if it has changed, it'll drop through to here. We'll update the state so that uh, we remember it next time. And then we send the key press uh, to the keyboard. And we say release all, which is basically the equivalent of pressing the key and releasing it on the keyboard. So we're going to use R, G, and W, and Y to represent red, green, and yellow. So let's go ahead and download this or upload it, as they say. And then I'll switch to, as soon as it finishes uploading, Okay, it looks like my port changed, no problem. Upload it again. Okay, so it finished uploading. And now I have this uh, notepad window where it should display characters. So if I press G, you can see that's working great. If I press Y, you can see here's the problem. If I push gently, it starts to skip. Uh, this is called bouncing. Yeah, these are not great switches. And then if I press this, the emergency stop, you can see that works as well. But again, we're getting some uh, changes. I updated the code so that it would handle debounce. Now, debounce is looking at the pins. When you're pushing the button down, and before you've gotten all the way to the bottom, there's a transition period. And during that transition period, the you have a switch that's like this. And during the transition period, when you're pushing down it, it can actually go back and forth between open and closed fairly quickly a few times. That's called bouncing. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that uh, we ignore the times where it changes quickly and just look at the times where it's steady. We're doing that using uh, this thing called a debounce delay. So we're saying that it has to stay in one position for at least 50 milliseconds before we consider it to be in that state. And the code here, which I'll make available for download, takes care of that. So what we're doing is we're getting uh, the old state from this variable here, which we set down here. And then we get the current state. So basically what we're doing is we, we now have the previous state as well as the current state. And then we save that right away. And if those two values change, we set this last time. Uh, so the last time is when the button state changed the last time. Then what we want to do here is look at how long it's been since it changed. So if it's been less than 50 milliseconds, we'll just return. If it's been more than 50 milliseconds, which means it's settled down in state, then we use this value called final state. Uh, here what we want to do is say, okay, has the state, is the state in the state that we want for sending a character? And if it is, 
then we'll drop through the, to the code below. And by the way, I also forgot to mention here that this is making sure that we drop through this code only once when the state changes. What I've done down here is I've changed it to serial.print instead of the keyboard. Uh, that makes it easier to debug and see what's going on. Uh, because what I want to do is show the state and then the key that we would send. So let's go ahead and upload that and then take a look at how it works. View the serial monitor. It uh, looks like uh, sometimes the port changes on me. Uh, I'm not sure why. Okay, so now we have the serial monitor and if I press screen, you can see G appears just once every time I press. If I press the yellow slowly, the yellow is the really bouncy one, you can see we just get a single Y, which is exactly what we want. And then finally the emergency stop. So this is perfect. This is working exactly the way we want. The next thing that we need to do is change it so that instead of using serial.print, it's actually sending the correct keystrokes. I'll go ahead and do that, and then we'll need to take it over to Mach 3 to test it. I made the changes, but I can't test them on this machine because they're sending the real keystrokes. You can see this is the first change. I checked the value use alt, which is up here. Oops, right here. And if that value is true, then I send the left alt key. Basically, this says press the left alt key, then send the key that I asked for. And you can see here for red, that means it's setting, sending alt s, green is alt r, and yellow is just the space bar without the alt key. Let's have, head over to the machine and give it a test. Let's give it a try. So at this point, I have a program set up. This should start it. And there it goes. And of course, uh, at post some point, I can press the, uh, the feed hold, but uh, the feed hold doesn't stop it right away. It does stop it. And then if I press this, it'll continue moving again. And of course, if something goes really bad, emergency stop. Yes! <laughs>